The White Stone forces are rife with mistrust, fear, and bigotry. Without Gunther and Lorana, I don't think they ever would have fought together. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the Whitestone Forces. I would like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel, and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. I'm referencing the War of the Lands source book primarily for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. When I think of the Whitestone forces, I think of Tasselhoff destroying the Dragon Orb in order to quell the riotous dissent between the supposedly good people of Kryn. The war, which had a firm grip on Ancelon, had met paltry resistance, primarily because these good people of Kryn were full of bigotry and counterproductive pride. Even amongst their own houses, the free peoples of Kryn were anything but unified. The Knights of Salamnia were racked by political infighting. The elves and dwarves were more focused on fighting on their own home fronts than supporting others. But this isn't to say nothing good came out of it. First of all, Theros Ironfeld provided the forces with the dragon lances. Secondly, after the Battle of the High Clarice Tower, Sturm Brightblade's sacrifice provided the knighthood with an aspirational ideal. And if it weren't for Gunther Uthwistan, seeing the potential greatness in Laura Lanthalasa Cannon, the daughter of the Quilinty Speaker of the Sun, the forces would arguably not have been able to rally behind another leader. You really can boil down the leadership of the Whitestone forces to Lord Gunther Uthwistan, Grand Master of the Knights of Salamnia, and Lorana, the Golden General. Beneath them in the chain of command, you have the army's commanders. The Salamnic Knights refer to their commander as the Warrior Lord, usually a Knight of the Rose. The Elven armies have two commanders, the Speaker of the Sun being the ultimate commander, but he leaves many daily decisions to the Lord House Warrior. The Dwarven armies have the High King of the Kaolin, and the Kender commander is Cronin Thistlenaut. Beneath the army commanders are the Brigade commanders. The Salamnic army features three brigades, one of each of their orders called Lord Knights. The Elven armies also feature three brigades, one for House Warrior, one for House Rider, and one for House Archer. The Dwarven armies are divided into five brigades, but they only have four brigade commanders leading them, as the Gully Dwarves have no real leaders at all. Beneath the brigade commanders are the company commanders. The Gully Dwarves are missing those as well. <laughs> However, this is more than made up for by the Kender forces, as they have three times the company commanders of any other army, just to keep the Kender in line. Under the company commanders are the sergeants, who command squads of 10 to 15 soldiers. Again, Kenders are the exception, as their sergeants are assigned to no more than 3 to 5 soldiers each. <laughs> Not surprisingly, the Gully Dwarves have no sergeants either. The Salamnic army makes up the backbone of the Whitestone forces, due to their training and effective cavalry. With the combination of dragon lances and good dragons joining the war in 352 Alt Cataclius, the Salamnics led the sea change in the war. Again, the Salamnic forces are led by Lord Gunther, who was recently appointed Grand Master of the Knighthood. Surprisingly, there are only 63 knights in the forces in all. The rest of the soldiers were made up of squires and mercenaries led by those knights. Roughly a third of their knights were mounted on dragonback for the remainder of the war. The Elven army was promised by Solasteran, the Quilinisty Speaker of the Sun, though he didn't send any of those forces in until after the Battle of the High Clarice Tower. Some Sylvanisty joined their cousins with the disapproval of Sylvanisty leadership. The Elven forces are integrated into the Salamnic's plans by Lorana, but are directly led by Amrilis Sirtirinen. The vast majority of Sylvanisty have turned their attention to their own homeland. The difference in battle styles is evident between the Salamnic and Elven forces. Though a few elves ride dragonback, most fly griffins in scouting or skirmishing roles. The Dwarven armies are notably absent from the Whitestone forces until after the Battle of the High Claris Tower as well. Even then, only the Dwarves of Kaolin are present, acting in defense from southern incursion for the Salamnic battle lines and assisting refugees from the north. 
The dwarves of Thorbarden are defending their own kingdom. Dwarves are masters of fortification, preferring to let the enemy come to them. The Agar dwarves insist on assisting to everyone else's dismay, and though they're not effective strategists, they do have passion and are relatively effective in their mob tactics. The Kender armies feature six brigades, stationed in Hilo on northern Aragoth. Many Kender freely invite themselves to other units, but are more often thrown out of them. The remainder of the Whitestone forces are composed of paid mercenary companies or volunteers. Not all share the high ideals of Whitestone, but see the Dragon Armies as clearly a poorer choice when it comes to choosing a side. Some of the units are led by Whitestone forces, and some arrived with their own leadership. It costs a lot to maintain the mercenary armies, but the Whitestone, and specifically the Salamnic forces, are forced to relearn how to protect their supply lines after relying on magic users in ages past. There are also rebel organizations that attempt to bring communities against the Dragon Army occupiers and generally make life difficult for them. Flotsam features a rebel group of 12 bandits turned revolutionaries and a small Kaganesti elf circle led by Silver Fox's lieutenant, Erwin. Even Naraka has a resistance movement called Hidden Light. They also operate out of Jellic. At their height, they hosted 149 members, led by Talent Orin, who was assisted by a large barbarian named Maelstrom, and Loot, the pawnbroker. <laughs> they do not always agree on why or how they are operating against the Dark Queen's forces, but they all swore an oath against them. Though the Whitestone forces were hindered by their histories as disparate armies and cultures, in the end, they all recognized the existential threat the Dark Queen and her dragon armies posed to Kryn, and I suppose better late than never could hold true to their support? I would personally make the argument that the war would have been won infinitely earlier if each of these armies in the Whitestone forces put aside their petty squabbles and worked together. This cultural hatred and distrust would last well into and through the Summer of Chaos long after the war ended, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt, to me at least, the people of Kryn are just as idiotic as our own disparate human nations. <laughs> I suppose this realization should make me feel better about our own ignorance and self-sabotage by familiarity, if for no other reason. But it doesn't. And that is all I have to say about the Whitestone forces. I hope you enjoyed the information. What other details would you like to learn about the Whitestone forces? Do you have a favorite Whitestone army? And finally, if the denizens of Kryn all got along in some utopian future, would it ruin Dragonlance as a campaign setting? Leave a comment below. I would like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click that like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember... No... Only dreamers fight to the death. There are only a handful of such fools in the world. All others surrender and hope they will not be beaten too often by their new masters.